all of you. I, I just want to take a few minutes and share a few thoughts. You know, when people talk about you know, the state party caucuses, it's always the labor caucus and the Latino caucus and this huge caucus. Folks, you are the caucus of the future. You are what is deciding elections. It's, it's the internet caucus. It's technology. This is it. No election in our history has underscored it like what's happening right now. And I'm going to give you some facts and figures and back that up. I just wanted to kind of rewind a little bit. In the first 20 years I was active politically, I worked in the Carter administration. We all walked around as Democratic Party. In fact, I think just about anybody who was active then is still here. <laughs> <laughs> we are smoke. We're the party of the grassroots. We're the majority. We own a smaller donor base. And lo and behold, in the 80s, we got hit with three things. Which were the whole Reagan revolution, optimism, they just outpositioned us. We ran a candidate who ran a platform on raising taxes. Well, actually, we did that last time, too, but... <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work for Mondale, it didn't work, but bad positioning. Second, the Republicans kind of rolled in the whole religious right thing. And third, a man named Richard Biggery inserted the magic chemistry of turning direct mail into a science. And lo and behold, we weren't even the candidate, the party, of the grassroots anymore. And guess what? We've lost five out of the last seven presidential elections. Now, folks, you do that in sports, you get fired. But something's happened in this presidential race because of the dynamism of two extraordinary candidates. We now own the Internet. The numbers are stunning. The number of people coming out to vote is extraordinary. In the last election, the number of people who voted, 65 and over, exceeded the number of people, 30 and under, 5 to 1. In this election, dead even. Young people are coming out, record numbers. Why? Partly the candidates, but partly this thing called the internet. And I just wanted to talk about two things. Social networking tools and fundraising. Because the numbers on both are so dramatic. And I want to end then with just a call to action. On the numbers side, this whole issue of social networking tools, there are now over 1.4 million people with Facebook sites for Obama and Hillary Clinton. The number of people who are watching Obama videos in one day on YouTube, can anybody guess how many people are watching? 24 million people download an Obama video per day. So this whole issue of social networking tools is extraordinary. And the picture I want to paint is in the old days, we'd go back and say, okay, we're having a party meeting, here's the mail, or light up the phone tree. But it was always from the party headquarters to the faithful one-way directed. Now what's happening, and I'll give you an insight here that few people know, is we're creating the tools so the grassroots can go to other grassroots. It, it, is, it is the promise of what we are supposed to be about, this thing called the internet. And because of a guy who most, have any of you heard of Chris Hughes? He's a 23-year-old guy. He's known in Silicon Valley. Why? He was one of four people who founded a little company called Facebook. So the guy's worth, I don't know, maybe $100 million. He's 23. He's a Democrat. He says, you know what? To hell with all of this. I'm going to join the presidential campaign. I'm going to go back to Chicago and work for the guy like Barack Obama. And I'm going to make the best interactive website in the world, all filled with social networking tools. And who would know better than the guy who founded Facebook, who, by the way, is an ardent Democrat. Now, in contrast, what Senator Clinton did, it appears, is I'm going to hire the best Madison Avenue people and the most expensive consultants possible. I'm on the Obama side, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> but a perfectly good website, but a little different perspective. But ergo, what Obama did Part of the reason, other than being charismatic, is he was able to get these extraordinary crowds because they put all these tools up, not just saying, here's what's going on, but here's how you yourself can create your own entity where you can literally say, we need you to make phone calls in a place like Wyoming. And lo and behold, you can download in your living room the entire call list for your precinct in Wyoming. For whoever you want to call in from Pasadena or Chula Vista or Palo Alto, you can make those calls, you can log in the results, upload it back, all from your room or PC anywhere in the United States. 
these are the sorts of things that are putting us back in the lead. Fundraising side, wise, I don't need to tell you what's going on, but the ability to raise money, not just, hey, give now, but the numbers of people who are empowered to ask for money and do fundraising at the local level has dramatically changed politics forever. And what I want to leave you with is a call to action. Because we have a chance, literally for the first time in 20 years, to take control of politics in this country by becoming the party of the grassroots again, which we haven't been. And so I leave you with a call to action. It all starts with building a database. In the old days, it was, it all starts with walking your precinct, and those things are important. Now, it's about data, it's about PCs, it's about the things you stand for. You've got to create that database. Number two, You've got to involve people so it's not one going to one or one going to two. All of you are empowering your networks to go to each other, but with a clear call to action. And what Obama and Clinton have done so well is they've said, if you want to help out, you don't have to wait around. You don't have to show up 7 o'clock at night. You can do it anytime you want. Go here. If you want to raise money, here's what you do. If you can help call people in the key states, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Indiana, here's what you do. If you just want to turn out a big crowd, and everybody says, God, Obama is so inspiring. <coughs> I was with him. We expected 3,000 people in Oakland. We had 10,000. We had 20,000 people in Austin, 25,000 in Washington. How does he do it? Well, let me tell you, he happens to be a good speaker. But they're using the internet in ways people have never dreamed. This is a big part of of the secret sauce for Democrats winning control of the White House. I'd like to see us win five of the next seven elections. But it's up to you. I just hope that this part of the next seven. I settle for seven in the next seven. Some of this stuff's luck, folks. But I just want to say, it's an extraordinary time. What has happened is more amazing than ever. I would urge you to invite Chris Hughes out to talk to you personally. He comes out all the time, and he will knock your socks off. But Thank you for letting me um, come by today. Thank you.